You know that feeling, right? A website suddenly stops working, and your first instinct is to blame your Wi-Fi. But what happens when it's not just you? What if a huge chunk of the internet just flickers out? Well, that's exactly what happened during a massive Cloudflare outage, and it pulls back the curtain on something fundamental and honestly kind of scary about the internet we all use every single day. And it always, always starts with this question. You're trying to shop, maybe log into work, and nothing. Everything just hangs. So you refresh, you check your connection, and then you send that universal text of digital panic to a friend. Hey, is it just me? But see, this wasn't an isolated problem. This was not your router needing a quick reboot. No, this was a synchronized global event. It felt like someone somewhere was playing with the internet's dimmer switch. At first, the signs were subtle. A page takes a little too long to load. A login button just does nothing. But then it got really weird and really annoying. You started getting trapped in these endless loops, asking you to prove you're human over and over and over again. And what started as just a minor headache, you know, a bit of confusion, it spiraled fast. It became pretty clear this wasn't some small glitch. Something big had snapped and people all over the planet were feeling it at the exact same moment. The sheer scale of it was just staggering. Reports started flooding in from literally everywhere, India, Vietnam, London, all experiencing the same bizarre failures. And it wasn't just websites either. We're talking critical infrastructure. A city's train tracker just died. Entire companies found themselves locked out of their own work portals. This was a digital brownout on a global scale. This quote from a user just nails the feeling of that day. For a lot of people, the internet wasn't completely off. It was just unstable. It would flicker back to life for a second, you'd get this little glimmer of hope, and then poof, it was gone again. It really felt like the entire web was running on a loose power cable. So, after the dust settled, the big question became, why? Why did this happen? And that question brings us to a huge vulnerability in the modern internet, something we can call the Jenga problem. And this was the question you saw in every forum, every social media site. You have to remember, just a month before this, a massive AWS meltdown caused almost the same kind of chaos. So when Cloudflare went down, people weren't just shocked. They were tired. It was this collective, frustrated sigh of, seriously, again? And here's the answer. A massive, massive portion of the web, we're talking sites and apps that seem totally disconnected, is actually propped up by a very small number of gigantic companies. It's just way cheaper and easier for businesses to pay these giants for their infrastructure than to build it all themselves. These are the pillars holding everything up. And if one of them starts to shake, well, the whole building sways. This really gets to the heart of it, this idea of a single point of failure. We've basically designed an internet where one tiny mistake at one company can trigger this massive domino effect, knocking millions of totally unrelated services offline all at once. And this user comment just illustrates the risk perfectly. It's not just a clever line, it's the perfect metaphor. We've built this incredible, amazing, complex tower, but we've made some of the blocks at the bottom so important that if you pull just one of them out, the whole thing can come crashing down. But okay, in the middle of all this technical meltdown, there were these moments of pure, infuriating absurdity. And the best example has to be what some people started calling the CAPTCHA apocalypse. Just picture this. You're trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So you go to a different website, and it hits you with a CAPTCHA. Fine. You click the boxes, you solve the little puzzle, and your reward? Another CAPTCHA. You are now stuck in verification purgatory, a digital hell loop created by the very service that was broken. And this quote, this just perfectly captures everyone's frustration. Websites were actually showing error messages saying things like, please make sure you're allowing Cloudflare through, while Cloudflare itself was the one causing the entire problem. It's like your smoke alarm beeping and telling you to check the batteries while the house is on fire. And the layers of irony here, oh, they were just beautiful. Down Detector, the site we all rush to when things break, was down because it uses Cloudflare. Cloudflare's own status page went down. But my personal favorite, a stock trader tried to short Cloudflare stock while it was plummeting, but he couldn't because his trading platform also runs on Cloudflare. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Okay, so let's zoom out for a second. This outage isn't just a technical glitch. It's really a symptom of a fundamental choice we've made about how we build the internet. It's a choice to prioritize convenience over resilience. You see, the early internet was 
Well, it was a messier, more decentralized, and yeah, often a slower place, but it was also more resilient. Today's internet is sleek, it's fast, it's incredibly convenient, but all that convenience comes from centralization. We've traded this sort of messy ruggedness for clean, efficient services, and in doing so, we've created a system that is incredibly powerful, but also dangerously fragile. And this sentiment really gets to the heart of that trade-off. We gained incredible speed and ease of use, but we lost some of that tough, independent spirit that defined the early web. We accepted the deal, and big outages like this one, well, they're the price we pay. Now, it's really tempting to look at this whole thing as a freak accident, a one-off event. But the uncomfortable truth is, this wasn't an anomaly. It was a preview. This didn't just happen in a vacuum. A few weeks earlier, an AWS meltdown caused its own version of chaos. First AWS, now Cloudflare. You start to see a pattern here. These failures aren't bugs, they're features of the system we built. And it leads to a really terrifying question. What happens if two of these pillars wobble at the same time? And that's the real takeaway here. The fragile internet that we have today didn't happen by accident. It's the direct result of thousands and thousands of choices made by developers and companies over many years. Choices that almost always favored speed, scale, and convenience over decentralized resilience. We chose this path. We built it this way. Which leaves us with the exact same question everyone was asking that day. Now, we know the technical answer, right? It's centralization. But the real question is whether we're actually okay with this being our new normal. Because one thing is for sure, the internet is gonna flicker again.